Hey, welcome back to The Grudge. Uh, we're working on yet another bulkhead here, the 706 bulkhead, uh, working our way towards the tail and the tail end of the bulkhead section of this build. We'll likely have a diverse set of tasks as we rotate these through the primer booth and I try to keep moving as much as possible while I've got some days cleared to build. So with that, I'm going to get to it, start pulling parts. Uh, the first step here, we've got to get these uh, flanges set at an angle, get the bulkheads fluted so they lay flat, and then start to work on them. So this is the bulkhead. Uh, it's, it's nearly as big as the firewall. This is the biggest bulkhead uh, out of the... The tail section bulkheads, obviously we're starting from the front and it tapers as it goes down. Now, keeping that taper in mind when we adjust the flanges of these, all the flanges on these bulkheads point forward. And so we don't want a 90 degree angle. We want to match that same taper in the flanges of our bulkhead. Coincidentally, they're already bent out and that's been the case with any flanges they tend not to be fully formed to a 90 and you gotta sort of push them in that direction um, so they're probably pretty good where they're at what's not good is how flat they're laying and so this will need to be fluted Uh, I'm trying with some of these pieces, but as you can see, there is a significant amount of warping. Um, and I don't know if my little puckering of the edge is going to be able to do anything for that. I'm hoping that we get some stiffeners on this and it straightens out. Uh, the side pieces of the bulkhead uh, are definitely laying flatter. And, and I think once we join all three of these hopefully there's some strength in the three of them completing a circle jury's out on whether i made the problem better or worse we still have some of this kind of wavy bacon action on these pieces um, but again i'm hoping that that resolves itself as we get these structures tied together overall they're pretty flat from one end to the other that i'm happy with uh, before we tie it together, I got some holes to widen up for snap bushings for rudder lines and static lines. Might as well get those knocked out now. I went ahead and measured out two additional holes for snap bushings, uh, one for a static line. The other is for a manual trim cable, which I'm not gonna have, I have electronic trim. But if I have the opportunity to put another cable route through right now, I'm gonna take it. So even though I might not have a manual trim cable running through there, uh, I have a feeling I have plenty of systems that need to run forward to aft. I'm gonna take advantage of that sort of pre-approved snap bushing location. The hard part about these is uh, they also land on the flange of a baggage rib and the same thing happened with the last bulkhead. Um, I don't, I can't tell if it's going to be easier to try and widen those with the unibit once everything's all riveted together or if I tried to, should try to do them separately and have those holes line up. I'm still noodling over that one. Our next adventure is to make a little bracket out of angle aluminum and then take one and a half degrees out of the 90 degree bend on that. I'm thinking the best way I'm going to be able to do that is give it a gentle squeeze in a vise. Um, luckily it's small and if I muck it up we'll start over and I'll figure out a different way to do it.
All right, there we are. We're at 88.5. Uh, that gentle squeeze worked really well. I wouldn't suggest doing that if if you were trying to, to go for much more than a degree and a half. Eventually, you're not going to get an even bend across the, the legs of this angle. But for, for such a subtle adjustment, I think this worked great. Let's keep moving. Well, things have sort of come to a halt here, uh, unfortunately. Um, I've been happily chewing my way through a piece of angle. It's, it's gone into just about every uh, step so far. This, this piece of angle is a 0 .063 inch thick piece of angle, three quarter by three quarter. Um, and it's, it's, like I said, it's used in just about every step. We've been cutting it off for the, the bulkheads in the firewall. Um, we need two significantly longer portions for this bulkhead. Uh, one about two feet, one about three feet, uh, which is about five feet of angle. Now, they only sent six feet of angle, um, but I do know that some pieces for the fuselage were sent with the wings because they were long. Uh, so I dug out my wing inventory and sure enough, I should have two pieces of 12 foot 063 angle uh, and I was ecstatic. And so I crawled to the back of my part shelf where I keep my longer ons, uh, thinking it was back there. And sure enough, I have two pieces of 12 foot angle, but it's 0.125. Uh, and I must have not caught that when I did my wing inventory. Um, so it's about twice as thick. It will not work. Uh, therefore, I don't have the required angle to complete this bulkhead and likely some of the following steps. So I'm going to put this aside. I'm going to need to reach out to Vans uh see if they'll make a trade for some 125 angle for some 063 angle uh even if i have to buy it it's not that big of a deal the problem is the drive over there tends to waste a lot of time um i'll see what i can get done uh, again we'll we'll set this step aside and and pick a new bulkhead to work on well luckily this this curveball isn't too difficult to deal with uh first of all the next four bulkheads are all very straightforward and we're gonna tackle a lot of the work simultaneously rather than one by one. Um, right now, I've got bulkhead 707 here. A, it doesn't look like there's a lot of need for fluting. Everything's pretty flat. B, uh, the flanges are a little bit angled. That's what we wanna see. Um, so I'm not gonna adjust those. Really, all I have to do is drill some holes for the static lines. The dimensions for that fresh in my mind because we just did the same thing on 706, uh, and then prep to prime. Next, we need to mark and drill for static air routing. Uh, let's, let's stop that there. We actually don't. We don't need to drill holes for static air routing, at least not in this bulkhead. In the following bulkhead, we do. Um, but I'm watching this video, and I can tell I'm off my game. I'm disorganized, um, and, and it's related to having to switch gears. But more so, it's related to not taking the proper time to go through the instructions like I normally would have done and to pull the plans and study them. And instead, I tried to just roll up the punches and keep moving, and I shouldn't have done that. And as a result, we're gonna wind up with some extra holes in uh, a bulkhead. Uh, it's not the end of the world, but I do wanna warn folks, you don't put these in your plane. Important to note, uh, these are 7 sixteenths. That's four steps on the drill. Uh, these are 5 eighths. That's all the way to my blue tape here. We added some holes for snap bushings for static lines to pass through the bulkhead. Uh, the only other thing that we have to do to 707 is to enlarge some holes for the rudder cables.
Oh yeah, so 708, uh, same thing, very straightforward, with the exception of the forming on this is uh, a little less clean. Uh, 707 laid flat right from the get-go. This is warped, the flanges need some work, and I think it's just because everything's getting so tight and closed in towards the end of the fuselage. Uh, we are going to enlarge the holes for the rudder cables, and in this case, we're gonna add about eight holes along the perimeter of the bulkhead to route the static lines uh, to prepare them for their termination on the exterior of the fuselage. Okay, so truth time. Uh, you can tell I, I kind of planned on editing my previous mistake out. God, I'm a turd. Anyways, uh, this bulkhead actually needs those holes. Uh, I've never had to flute anything as heavy as I have that, but you can see it, it lays flat, it works great. The 709 bulkhead is just this little guy. Uh, this is where the top of the fuselage ceases um, and the horizontal stabilizer starts, the rudder comes in, and we'll have a fairing. Uh, the only thing that we need to do to this is try and take out some of the pretty noticeable warping from the forming process. So again with fluting and doing whatever I can sheet metal wise to get the holes aligned and it to lay flat. Well, I'd say that's looking a lot better. I think we're good. So bulkhead 710, pretty simple. Uh, it's already laying pretty flat. No huge concerns about fluting or flange adjustment. Uh, we're making the same enlarged holes for snap bushings for the rudder cable. And then there's a pretty heavy metal bracket going at the top that requires some angle cuts and uh, some match drilling. Bulkhead 711 is a little more complicated than what we've been doing up to this point. Uh, there is a A and a B front and back, so those are going to get match drilled together. Before we even do that, we've got to take them over to the bandsaw and remove a sizable chunk of them uh, to make way for linkages. <laughs> Thank you. 
after we've removed the chunk uh, from the center of each of those formers, we're going to clean comb together. And then we got to fabricate some pretty heavy duty bars. Uh, these bars will wind up helping support the, I think, rudder and horizontal stabilizer. Um, these are similar to the seatbelt bars in that there's a lot of holes to be match drilled. And then on top of that, they need to be tapered down to a rounded point. There's a little angle that gets cut off of the top corner to help them clear the skins. trimmed they were they were a lot of work uh, it didn't help that my bandsaw got sort of a mean shimmy to it part way through um, and made that cut a lot harder to control but uh, nice and straight and uh, cleaned up with the file they look gorgeous uh, I'm gonna get them drilled to the bulkheads After those are completed, uh, we went ahead and made yet another angled bracket that goes to the top, uh, again acting as sort of a shelf, much like 710's bracket, except this one's a little bit smaller. These are the long runs. You definitely don't want to cut those. These are 12 footers. Now they should be 063 but they're not, they're one, two, five. I could use those, but Vans might want them back. I don't know, I just sent an email. These are what we want. Uh, this piece nearly identical to uh, the one on 710, just like its little brother. It's a little smaller in every way wedges that were cutting off the side are quite a bit smaller. I could almost file them, but I have a feeling if I started that, I would regret it. I think it would take some time. Bulkhead 712, uh, also a front and back two piece bulkhead with a tie down going on that. Um, we've done the tie downs before with the wings. We use a piece of aluminum extrusion. It needs to be cut, trimmed, uh, drilled, then tapped. Uh, now something different about this whole bulkhead is there needs to be flush rivets on the aft side to make uh, room for the vertical stabilizer uh, where it sticks down. So that will be up against this one. So we need to do some dimpling. The only uh, former or bulkhead, I should say, to this point that I can tell that needs any sort of dimpling. So it's time now to deburr and prime. Uh, I'm gonna start with this piece. For some reason, 
every tab has these nice rounded corners and this piece and this piece alone really so far into the build this piece alone has like these razor sharp square edges to all of the tabs and I don't know why and of course the instructions aren't going to tell you I don't think they're necessary and it certainly goes against every principle of deburring we've learned to this point uh, so rather than spend a week filing all these down I'm going to give myself a head start I'm going to dog ear them all with some tin snips and then just round them over with the scotch right wheel I'm going to start with this one, get the hard work out of the way. The rest should be simple comparatively. stir your axo before you go to paint. It will separate in the, the short amount of time, the half hour it takes to kick. I get a lot of comments on uh, the tight space, my small garage, and uh, honestly, yeah, it's a it's a pretty small space, but it's actually quite functional. I think I really, really lucked out with the dimensions. Um, it, I've never really felt like I'm bumping up too tight to things. All of that said, uh, there is one area where I could absolutely use some, some more space, and it's this hunk of crap right here. Um, that thing is tight. It is, it is so tight that my gun is always bumping up against things and it's just about impossible. Uh, luckily, primer is not crucial, something, you know, something like paint, um, but boy, it is, it is rough every time in there. I do have one note and it's that, uh, even though I think I, I first started priming parts about a year ago, uh, this last batch, I actually felt like I knew what I was doing. Um, and uh, I, I attribute that to a few things. Um, I was running without a regulator on, on the green gun and I added one and that has helped a lot. And, and when adding that, I took some time to dial in some of the other settings. And it was like, I was on fire in there. I felt like the first time uh, primer was flowing as it should. For this one, it's as simple as that. Uh, six rivets, these two are left open because that is gonna tie into that bulkhead uh, that we've had to put on the back burner. In fact, that angle of aluminum that I need is part of the piece that runs fore to aft between the two bulkheads and rivets in for these top two here. Uh, now, if you're looking at this, uh, and I've learned we have some eagle eye viewers, 
I'm going to talk over myself for a minute because you've already heard me explain this error, but I would like to talk big picture about errors. I'd say about 89% of the blunders I've made make it to the film, and you all have seen some of those blunders. I do often remove things like drilling out bad rivets because it just seems tedious, though I probably could include some more of those because um, everybody's going to have to do it, and there's value in that. I'll also continue to include the mistakes that I've made like the one above. If I can save somebody else the trouble, I'd love to, especially if I've already gone through it myself. So there really is no reason to remove it other than to avoid a little embarrassment. All I ask is that y'all go easy on me. While I've built a lot of things, an experimental airplane is not yet one of them. And that's this little guy. Again, these are pretty straightforward um, and quite fun. As we move towards the aft end of the plane, they get a little more difficult with a little more rivets. Let's keep going. Bulkhead 709 needs no additional work. That'll go in the pile of done bulkheads. Uh, and 710 simply needs this piece of aluminum that we fashioned riveted to the top. Now, that's a deep reach, but I'm able to get in there and squeeze it with sort of turning this into a super longer on squeezer. So take a look how this works. is complete and uh, we have a spot for my horizontal stabilizer to rest I believe is what that's for. Uh, let's move on to 711. I love watching me struggle with this stupid squeezer and trying to get it to work before finally breaking down and just getting out the old rivet gun and bucking bar. Uh, the top angle is left off of this bulkhead, apparently attached later. That is why I have the blue tape at the top of these to remind me uh, to read the instructions before I rivet any of those holes. So with that, 711 is done. Um, moving on to 712. I'm really glad we had the mistake talk earlier because you're about to watch me make another one. You see, when attaching the rear tie-down bracket, I did so using all six rivet holes, even though four of those are supposed to be left open for attaching the rear vertical stabilizer. Now, these are going to have to be drilled out, but that's going to have to wait for a future episode. I'm up against my self-imposed time limit, which really bums me out because I have loads more footage from this long weekend of building. So keep your eyes open for another episode where we start to tackle the longer ons. Eventually, I'm going to get that bulkhead that we skipped done, and soon here, we're going to start in on the aft fuselage. In the meantime, I want to thank everybody for tuning in. I want to thank everybody for subscribing, for the thumbs up. I really want to thank everybody for the nice comments they've left. And I can't wait to see you next time here on Ryan Flies. Okay. So the aft face of this bulkhead is all flush. And I believe the vertical stabilizer will come in and line up on that. 712 done. And with that, the bulkheads are done, except for that missing one. <laughs>